F1 2020 has arrived and it's time to drive the most advanced racing cars in the world. If you're new to the game and need advice on how to get going, I can help. Let's get started. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well today. My name is PJ and today I'll be sharing 5 tips for new players on F1 2020. We'll be looking at some of the more helpful features in the game, as well as a few driving tips to get you up to speed in no time. If you ever have questions about F1 2020, sim racing, or you just want to hang out with a good community, I stream on Twitch every Friday. The link is in the description. Also, if this video helps you out and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel for future videos. But for now, let's get going. One of the big new features in F1 2020 is the ability to select two different race styles, standard and casual. Standard is what you're used to from previous games, the full, realistic Formula 1 experience with complete control over what options you wish to use. Casual, on the other hand, is specifically designed to help new players, making it an excellent choice for beginners. When you switch to casual race style, a number of assists are turned on by default, to make the car easier to control. On top of this, off-track surfaces are easier to drive over, ensuring you won't lose control. Finally, if you go too far off-track, the game will reset you to the road, give you a countdown and get you going again in no time. As you gain more experience with F1 2020, you can turn off various assists once you no longer need them, and eventually, switch to the standard race style for the full experience. Some game modes will require you to use the standard race style however, such as Time Trial, Online Multiplayer and F1 Esports, so keep that in mind before you race. As with any racing game, once you know a track layout, F1 2020 becomes a much more enjoyable experience, as that knowledge will help you make the right decisions when you're battling other cars or getting the best pace out of your own. Fortunately, F1 2020 has an excellent training tool for this, which you can use during free practice sessions in My Team, Career and Weekly events. The Track Acclimatization Practice Program places a series of gates on the circuit, showing you the best places to brake, turn and accelerate through every corner. As you pass through the gates, they will turn red, green or purple, depending on how well you handle that part of a turn. You will also earn points through each gate, which help you beat the target score for the entire lap. If you beat this score, you'll have a good understanding of the layout, and if you want to master the circuit, aim for a higher score. Elsewhere in F1 2020, you can also turn on the Racing Line Assist, which draws a line on the road for you to use as reference. The best experiences in F1 2020 come when you're racing wheel-to-wheel -wheel with your competitors, battling hard to beat them. Setting your AI difficulty to the right level helps enormously here, ensuring the cars around you are as quick as you expect them to be. To start, set up a race at Catalonia, a circuit that features every type of corner and is a good test for both the AI and yourself. Use a short qualifying session and a 5 lap race for this test. Make sure the weather is set to clear. Set your AI difficulty to 50 and proceed to qualifying. Drive your best in the session and take note of the times at the end. What we're looking for here is the gap between you and your teammate. If you're faster than them, you will need to increase the difficulty level, and if they beat you, you need to decrease it. For every second of a gap between you and your teammate, adjust the difficulty level by 10. Back out to the main menu and create the Grand Prix again, this time with your adjusted difficulty level, and run the test once more. Make note of the gap between you and your teammate, and tweak again if necessary, until there is less than a tenth between the two of you. After 3 or 4 attempts, you'll have the AI tuned perfectly to your current skill level, leading to exciting racing. As your skill improves in the coming weeks and months, head back to this test whenever you need to tweak the difficulty. Formula 1 cars have incredibly strong brakes, bringing them to a complete stop in a very short space of time. That can make braking for corners a challenge as it's tough to get the timing right. As you approach a corner you'll see various marker boards, showing you the distance remaining to the corner. A good starting point is to brake for each corner as soon as you reach the 100 meter board. For most corners, this should be around the right spot to slow the car down in time for the turn. Every corner is different though, and depending on the conditions you may want to brake earlier, so keep that in mind. As you get more confident in your braking ability, edge a little beyond the 100 meter board until you find your limit. A ton of time can be gained by nailing your braking points, so this is a key skill to develop. Your chosen camera angle can also have an effect on your racing experience, as it directly impacts how well you see upcoming corners, as well as the cars you're battling against. To get the best visibility for upcoming corners, you want a camera that's free of obstructions and fairly high off the ground. That lets you look down on corners and accurately place your wheels in the best positions. This is why the TV pod camera is so widely used. Not only does it fit the criteria we just mentioned, it mirrors what you see on TV when you're watching Formula 1 for real. One more thing to consider is your peripheral vision. Cameras with a narrow field of view may be great for feeling connected to the car, but will have significant blind spots on either side. If you're battling another car, that could lead to a crash, so be careful. 
the chase camera gives you a wider view, but it may make it harder to judge upcoming corners as you're further away from the car. Ultimately, there is no best camera, you have to try each one and get a feel for what's right. If this video helped you out and you want to see more, check out the guides on the right to get started. Also, to get future guides as they release, you can subscribe to help the channel grow. Have a great day and good luck on track.